Yes. Wow. I'm Barry Coleman, and on behalf of Irgun Bogre Habonim, Brochim Habaim, welcome Chavarot and Chavarim, and the dignitaries who are here with us to the 90th anniversary celebrations of Habonim Draw, Habonim Draw. Has David Rosa arrived? Is he here with us? Um, because I wanted to say to David that his esteemed grandfather was truly inspired to have had the vision to create the most incredible pioneering youth movement, which for 90 years, from Madrich to Chanich, from Madrich to Chanich, with an occasional Sharia thrown in, pioneered on Renfrewsley. The testimonial to which, as we can all see when we look around us in this audience today, is that here we all are, 90 years on, and we know that this is just the very tip of the iceberg. <laughs> we have with us in the audience this, this evening quite a few, just about 90 year olds, and way beyond. Chavarim who were on the war years and after Hachsharot of Hearst Grange, Gauzy Lees, Red Hill, the Eda Farmer Dial Post, Madrachim and Madrachot, house mothers and fathers of the war years evacuees and refugee hostels. On to the render scale, we also have with us today, up from Manchester and Leeds. <laughs> Seven lads and lasses, young ones on this year's, this year's Shnat Hachshara. And so, to you all, the Madrachim of our Madrachim's Madrachim, and the Chanichim of our Chanichim's Chanichim, we pay, pay homage and celebrate this evening. Heyach! 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 Heyach. Heyach. Okay, we're going to start off with a warm-up, and the warm-up is going to be Jason Feddy. Warm-up, eh? Hey? All right. My name is Jason Feddy. I joined Habonu in 1976. So I'm the youngest person in the room. <laughs> um, my shikva um, came on Shnat in 82 and were thrown off Betamek. <laughs> but I was not, no, I'm embarrassed about that and I was not there. I came out about a year earlier with the Aliat Hanawa group and I was thrown off Amiad. <laughs> A song for you. You do that, you're supposed to slap your hands together, that's what you do. You practice this. Habonim is a lot of things to a lot of people, but one thing's for sure that we made friends for life. So that's what this song is about. Chorus, so you can sing along if you get it. <laughs> Look at all us gathered here in this reunion hall. A little weather beaten, but we don't look bad at all. We've come from every corner to sit amongst our tribe. We throw our Friends 
stories since the first time that we met if you tell me yours I will tell you mine they are not over yet but your hair's a little grey now and your hands a little cold but that precious smile is the smile you smiled when you was 15 years old friends for life friends for life Childhood, in the raging heat of youth, we held hands around the fire pit and we hammered out our truth. And we talked into the morning and we shared our big ideas and we sang along to the guitar and we held each other near. How long has it been, my lovely? Let's go. 
George Levine, and I have the pleasure of being your MC this evening. This is our 90th anniversary, but we do share it with another very important organization, the Jewish Agency for Israel. And since 1929, both organizations have shared a love for Israel. We are delighted this evening to welcome as our first speaker, Yitzhak Bougie Herzog, Chairman of the Jewish Agency for Israel. And it is entirely and completely appropriate that he should be with us here this evening, as his late father, President Chaim Herzog, was the patron of our 65th anniversary and was, of course, also a founder and very prominent member of the Dublin Pelic. Yitzhak Herzog has enjoyed a most illustrious career as a long-standing member of the Labour Party, was the Cabinet Secretary, has held several government ministerial positions, and was also the leader of opposition. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big welcome to Yitzhak Kertzer. First of all, I feel at home. Finally, some Brits around. It's always good to be here. The Irish. And the Irish, of course, the Irish. I could not ignore the brogue. Nobody does. And um, I first would like to welcome His Excellency Ambassador Neil Wigan, the Ambassador of the United Kingdom in Israel, Her Majesty's <laughs> Ambassador. An incredible guy on his own right, by the way. He's married to an Israeli, but he's on his own right. <laughs> and uh, I sincerely hope, Ambassador, you don't have to respond that the 12th December elections will have a positive outcome on the people of Israel. And the rest, I'm a Vinny of Vin. Um, I want to thank my good friend, Neil Meir, the one and only, Manig Amiti. And I want to thank my good friend of Phil Liebstein, Rosham Motsai, Zorik Shara Negev, the regional council that stands firm in, uh, in front and in light of constant attacks, and to all of you good friends from the United Kibbutz Movement, and to you, uh, lady, dear Lady Ruth, for being here. I'm extremely moved because my father always spoke about his childhood in Aboni. And it was something that was minted in him, in him. When I think about his incredible career, serving both in uh, the British Army and liberating Europe, in conquering uh, and uh, liberating uh, Bergen-Belsen, in catching Heinrich Himmler, in being called by David Ben-Gurion and being one of Israel's warriors in '48, and then a general in the Israeli military, and representing Israel in the family of nations, and later on as president, the mixture of a house of Torah with a bonim was something that made him what he was. And I think that Imen came achen Torah, Imen Torah in their heads, Imen their heads and Torah, and the call nimza betoch a bonim. A bonim draw is an incredible movement. We are extremely proud. I find it something of a circle. The fact that I'm the chairman of the Jewish Agency. And I, and I have shlichim that are, of course, operated and selected with you guys, who are scattered all over the world and delivered the incredible message, the incredible message as was uh, delivered by the leaders of uh, this uh, wonderful movement. 
which has many generations, including the current Secretary General of the Abonim. And I want to thank our good friend Shiri Madar and the entire team who works with us constantly on handpicking the best shlichim possible all around the world who continue to deliver the message Mikol Dov Adol from every generation. And, it, and I would love to end, I mean there are people here who were there when my father was with you in, uh, at the 65th. Uh, especially Mr. Coleman and uh, the, all the group from Farnasi. Uh, but I'd like to read the letter which my father wrote to you then because I think I found it fascinating. It's from 1994. He wrote, I'm proud to be a member of the family of Aboni and share with you all the privilege of participating in the anniversary of uh, the founding of Aboni. The reunion carries a message to the young generation of Abonim in Britain and in, all the, uh, and in all those other countries within the framework of Abonim. I, I, a recorded history of the movement would provide, provide a fascinating story of an idea and the vision and determination of a very few, of one gdud that led within a very short space of time to a movement of hundreds and then thousands. The choice of the name Habonim, the builders, and the symbolism of the brick was a choice of genius. Abonim laid brick upon brick, upon brick, building a movement that had a tremendous impact on its members, but also affected the traditional leadership of the Anglo-Jewish community. The very fact of this reunion, and I say the very fact of this reunion, is indicative of the magic pull of, uh, of Habonim. The role of Habonim and every Zionist movement in the Galut, especially youth movements, is as important today as ever, and I agree with this today as the chairman of the Jewish Agency. The situation of the Jewish community in England and in most other countries is of ever increasing rate of assimilation and accelerating rate of decrease of these communities. Abonim abroad with the assistance and experience concentrated in Israel must increase its ranks, intensify, intensify its educational activities and strengthen even more its ties with Israel. Let us hope and pray that the peace process will ultimately produce those results that we pray for. That my father wrote in 1984. <laughs> Peace with all our Arab neighbors. I trust and believe that this reunion will, will be not only a pleasant and nostalgic meeting of kindred spirits, but also an inspiration to those whom I hope will follow our path. And I sincerely believe that there are so many who follow your path and we are very proud of your graduates and members of Abonim that you carry this flame from generation to generation with a unique sense of Jewish and Zionist responsibility. Toda raba lekulchem v'amatzlacha mikol alev. Thank you very much. Events such as today's require sponsors to help cover the many costs. So let me from here say a very big thank you to our two major sponsors, the Kibbutz Movement and the Kibbutz Representatives Charitable Trust for their most generous and important support. Thank you. Our next speaker is no stranger to Israel. And I am personally delighted to welcome here this evening His Excellency, the British Ambassador to Israel, Neil Wigan, OBE. The Ambassador's first taste of Israel was in the early part of this century when he worked here in the British Embassy. And I can say that I had the pleasure of literally working under him as he was on the second floor and I was on the first floor. <laughs> He has previously been ambassador to Somalia and to the Democratic Republic of Congo and has filled many important positions in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Please give a very warm welcome to His Excellency, the British Ambassador.
Thank you very much, uh, Yigal. And I would never have described myself as working on top of Yigal, as he was definitely uh, somebody who I relied on a lot for advice when I was here before. Um, he also promised me that I need neither to sing nor to talk about Brexit tonight. So I, I hope we can stick with both of those promises. Um, uh, so as, uh, as, as the Rosh Hashanah said, uh, my, my wife is Israeli. Uh, she's a kibbutznik, so I said, excellent, I'm going to meet lots of kibbutzniks. what should I say? Uh, and she said, no, I'm from Shomer Hatzair, so I have nothing to say to those people. Uh, except that you're all dangerous rightists. <laughs> and you didn't even mourn Stalin when he died. Uh, she didn't say that, but yes, at least not. Not, not publicly. Um, but thank you very much uh, for, for the invitation tonight, and it is, um, uh, and I am really delighted to be here. Um, partly because I've been thinking a lot in my, I've only been here for, for four months on this time, and I've been trying to think a little bit about the, the history of the relationship between Britain and Israel. Um, and I discovered recently that it goes back to, to at least 1000 BC, as archaeologists have recently discovered tin from Cornwall, uh, which has been exported to Israel 1000 BC. So if anybody says to me, Brexit's going to destroy the trade relationship between Britain and Israel, if we survive 3000 years, I'm pretty sure we can get through the next bit. Um, but also, uh, but today I was down uh, at Beth Shaver, and you, you can all see that I'm wearing the poppy as we approach the Armistice Day. But I was today down at the, the War Cemetery in Beth Shaver on the 102nd anniversary of the capture of Beth Shaver by British, Australian, uh, and New Zealand troops, and the famous charge of the, uh, the Australian New Zealand cavalry, the last great cavalry charge of the First World War. Uh, and seeing all the, the graves that I saw there, the graves I've seen elsewhere, made me think again about the, the link between um, Israel and the UK. I spend a lot of my time in my first few weeks here going around the universities, and there I see a completely different kind of the relationship, where you have truly amazing Israeli scientists, and I speak as somebody who, who's my, my only degree in science is in economics, which is the dismal science. So when I see what scientists here do, it looks frankly more like magic than it does like science. It's stuff that's truly astonishing. Um, but, but Israeli scientists really want to work with British scientists. And there's that sense of two countries where there's an amazing uh, potential for, for collaboration about the future uh, as well as about the past. But also going around, I've been struck again and again about how what I and the embassy, we depend on the personal connections between Britain and Israel. So much more than, than what I do, what diplomats do, um, it's about those personal connections which really make all the difference. And this is why groups like Habonim, which have such a deep uh, and historic connection between Britain and Israel, and keep it alive today and are educating the new generation for the future, uh, why you are, are so unbelievably important. Uh, and we know, of course, the, the amazing contribution that you made to the foundation of the State of Israel, both in the Kibbutzim, but more widely in a contribution that's well beyond your numbers. Um, and even that carries on today. So my counterpart, the, the Israeli ambassador in London, is, of course, a member of uh, Habonim himself. I met his wife uh, on a kibbutz here. So he's from the Australian Habanim. I don't know if that's acceptable to say here. Um, I'm feeling on nervous ground. Um, but, but that shows how the, the importance of uh, those connections that you've developed. But even of the, the, British, uh, the British Jews who've come out with you, who've been part of your organization, and who've gone back to Britain, but who care enormously about the relationship and keep it alive. Uh, whether that's um, Simon Sharma, of course, one of our greatest historians, but really one of the leading intellectuals in British public life. And I've heard him talk so passionately about the contribution of British Jews to British public life. Uh, or Sasha Baron Cohen, whose contribution is a bit different to British public life. But is, of course, appearing in the spy, so it's showing his, his true patriotic side. Um, but it's a connection that, that's hugely important and something that I, as uh, as both as a British ambassador to Israel, but also as somebody connected to the Gibbots movement, I feel really connected to. So it's been a pleasure to see some old friends, but to meet new ones tonight. Thank you very much, and good night.
tents and gear through England's green and pleasant land. And let's not forget Scotland, of course. And you know there was happening camps in Wales as well. Look you! And Bigora at the top of the morning. And in Ireland as well. And in those tents we lit the tilly lamps and learnt of sharing and loving Habernim camps. and they call that a teal. <laughs> and then they go back to luxury cabins with beds, duvets, and are you ready? <coughs> en suite bathrooms. <laughs> bathrooms? I dreamt of bathrooms. <laughs> us, all a thousand of us, were given a bowl of freezing cold water for our daily wash. A bowl? <laughs> a bowl, you say? God, oh, blimey, you were lucky. <laughs> we, if we were lucky, all 10,000 of us got one ice cube <laughs> and that was it. Luxury. <laughs> one ice cube. We have ten minutes to run down to the river, have a little bit of how's your father, and then we come back all 
15,656 of us, it's an old British bell tent, be that. Bell tent? I can beat that easily. In our day, all 17,526 of us had to sleep in one single bivy, remember? And they always, always put it in a bloody muddy field. <laughs> bivy? Pure luxury. Us, 17,802, had to sleep in a rucksack. <laughs> and some of them in a peg bag. <laughs> Sleep? <laughs> Who slept? <laughs> we had to get up before we went to bed and then we had to dance all night. <laughs>
recognizes the system of daily Torah note for all Hanichim at camp as already practiced at boarding camps and recommends it be tried in Sofim and Vatikim camps at the discretion of the Rosh Machane. The bell tent who remembers a wealth of stories told? No matter what the weather, the, run, the rain, the sun, the cold, no matter what the era, the thrills in that old tent, the friendships and allegiance through canvas came and went. And when the mud rose higher and we could not fight the damp, we would light our saviour, the trusted Tilly lamp. And so, Bell Tent, we honour you, your pegs, your pole, your dome. You weren't just any Bell Tent, to us, you were our home.
going to lay down by the storm in the cheek. Down by the river side. Down by the river side. Down by the river side. I'm going to lay down by the storm in the cheek. Down by the river side. considers Hafshara in the Gola the culmination of movement education in the Gola and a vital preliminary to Halutsik Ariya. <laughs> Thank you. 
and rocks and lots of cattle. Down on the farm, we learn to toil, by much we mother earth, and feel the soil. Go me dining every day. We need it. Tractor, but it didn't get far. Some of us stayed put and did the toronut. Others in a shiraz with an old guitar. Everybody thinks they're farmers playing with their farmyard toys. Milking cows, my muscle should have been on the rattle on the town with other girls and boys. Never got paid a buck. Everybody's happy, they don't give a <laughs> What's the blooming deal? What's the great appeal? You got to be a nutter with a high idea. Never been a place quite like it. Everlasting friends were made. A milker or a breeder on the David Eder, the place where more than chicken eggs got laid. But you know what I heard? Yeah, I heard another thing. Oh, God. At camps today, they have a team of chefs <laughs> that make ordinary meals, vegetarian meals, pescatarian meals, vegan, non-gluten, hold on, and kosher, and oh, all you. with added vitamins. <laughs> Spoiled kids. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose, and I suppose. What do you suppose? I don't know what I suppose. <laughs> I suppose they also got a choice of three deserts. What? Deserts? Where were we? The Gobi? Sahara? I don't remember that camp. Oh, you mean desserts? Desserts? Oh, desserts. Yeah, didn't you say so? I didn't have me hearing aid in, didn't I? Oh, my. All your glasses. In my day, what do you mean all my glasses? <laughs> in my day, our cooks had to make do with First World War army rations, used ones as well, and they cooked it on a Primus. <laughs> You were lucky. <laughs> we had one cook. And he had to find people. And we were in Manchester, mind, to find two dry sticks in Manchester. <laughs> to rub together to light the stone. <laughs> Don't cry to me. Yes, I remember that winter activity. He had to cook outside in the snow. And afterwards, Melted down for water. Water? You were lucky. <laughs> well, 
She ain't the only one who hears things. You know what I heard? Oh. Today, the Chamechim get their smartphones and they get to, well, I don't know, it's an app or something, and they order from McDonald's. Oh, it is an app because they order an happy meal. <laughs> and the Madrichin, what they do like, they do something like this. Hmm. They take a picture of them. Oh, it didn't work, doesn't matter, does it? And they post it on Facebook for parents to see. Oh, Facebook, Facebook. We didn't even want to talk to our parents. <laughs> parents, you were lucky. <laughs> I was telling a friend who wasn't in the movement about the 90th celebration. He asked, how are you going to tell the story of 90 years Habunim in only one day? One day, I said, I'm going to do it in three and a half minutes. It's a song, and you guys out there are going to have to help me. If I say, heach, hey hey louder, heach, hey hey sounds really good. Can I have some music, please? <coughs> Was in 1929, Wellesley Aron had a fine idea to attract the Jewish youth of Britain. With the cultural movement to give a direction by talks and games, they'd get the connection to Palestine being the Jewish national home. Well, Havelin became the movement's name. Gedun Trumpledore was the first to complain. The movement developed over the years. Chavrin went to become pioneers and make the country a modern Jewish state. From the kinder transport, we took the kids in and found them places in the Batim. We fought with our brothers in the Jewish brigade. We found illegal ways to reach the land as Ali Abed had been banned, and we were madrichim in the Cyprus camps. Your turn now. Hey, ach, hey, dad, hey, ach, hey, dad. All together we will shout today. Hey, ach, hey, dad, hey, ach, hey, dad. That's the way we say it in the rain. Well, a lot has happened since that early date. Israel was formed in 48, and Habonim became a worldwide sensation. Then Draw joined forces that gave us more. We've now become Habonim Draw. But you know that, because you're all sitting here today. To Kvar Bloom went our first Garin, then to Klahanasi came our Chavarim. Better Emek and Amiyad, they followed suit. Then Garin Gimel, Hey Vav and Zion, our friends from Draw went to Bachanayim and joined in the pioneering call. Bevo Chaba and Garin Chet, Mishmada bin Tuval, we can't forget. The Erebus with its challenges new. The traditions we made so long ago are the basis of which our movement did grow, and of course remains our cry. Chazak Vehemats! Hey, ach, hey, dad. Hey, ach, hey, dad. That's the way we're going to shout today. Hey, ach, hey, dad. Hey, ach, hey, dad. That's the way we say it in the rain. At camp, we always went to bed late with a mug of hot cocoa. That was always great. And lie in the tent and laugh and talk till dawn. Our great Madrachim, they were our leaders, and today, hey, they're the old geezers. And that's the movement, that's what it's all about. Now, 90 years on, yes, we're here today. Habanim Draw is here to stay, and we're looking at the next generation. Where Habanim come? Where will they be? On a kibbutz or in the city? It really doesn't matter, as long as they're all here. Hey, ach, hey, dad, hey, ach, hey, dad, all together we will shout today. Hey, ach, hey, dad, hey, ach, hey, dad, that's 
just the way we say it in the rain. That's the way we say it in the rain. Before I introduce our next speaker, 90th anniversary events don't just happen by chance. I would like to say that they require meticulous planning, but I think in this instance, mildly chaotic planning may be a better description. And I'd like to say thank you from here to all of those who have contributed so much to this evening's success. that not 20 yards from here are the Habonim archives, which house a treasure of fascinating information, a mere fraction of which has been seen here today in the, ex in the exhibition. The archive team, ably led by Mike Schnoor. Where are you, Mike? Stand up, take a bow. Anyway, we will be happy to receive any movement memorabilia that you may have. Our next speaker, Nir Meir, the Maskir of the Kibbutz Movement, was born and still lives at Kvutzat Shilo. He has held many important positions in his kibbutz and in the Kibbutz Movement and has been the Maskir since 2015. We thank you, Nir, for your support for this evening and I am delighted to ask you to bring greetings. and welcome to Efal. Well, you'll have to excuse my poor English since the Zionist uh, revolution has succeeded. So I born in Israel, my both parents born in Israel. So my English is quite poor and you'll have to excuse me. Just three short stories. First of all, whenever I became a uh, General Secretary of the Kibbutz Movement, we had a budget problem. So uh, we thought how to cut the budget. And there was a suggestion that we'll cut the uh, youth movement abroad because they are not bringing new kibbutzniks anymore. Since I'm a manager and I consider every problem by the uh, cost and benefits, I took place to the list and decide, well, there is a logic in this su uh, suggestion. And then came Rani Trinan from the Shomer Atzair. And he told me, go there, learn what it means, use movement abroad, and then get the decision. So Shiri sent me abroad to a few countries, and I find out that even if it's not contributes the kibbutz itself these days, and Kfar Bloom, and Kfar Nasi, and uh, Bet Emek, and Damiad, and Mevochama, so they exist already, so you don't have to visit anymore. Still, it's very, very important for us to take part in the education of the, youth, the Jewish youth Zionist abroad, and we decided to stay. Now, two small stories. About a year and a half came three honorable members to my office in Tel Aviv and say, well, you know, at the end of October uh, 1920, 90, uh, 20, 20, 90, we have our uh, 90 year celebration. Well, I said, it's one and a half year from now. Why are you coming? They said, you don't understand, we are English. <laughs> We came late. <laughs> then I find out that really, this is the situation. Last year, in the summer, 2018, there was a 70 year celebration of Beta Enoch. So I asked which date you built the kibbutz. And they told me January 49. So I asked, how comes you made the celebration of 70 years 
at August 2018. They said, we can't do it at the winter. It could. So I'd say, do it next winter. They told me, you are not understand. We are English. We never put it back because maybe there was something happened. So we'll do it earlier. So Betamex celebrated 70 years whenever they were 69. But this is the English culture, and this is your culture, and it's very interesting. All this evening is very interesting for, uh, to me, because I didn't know this culture, but it is interesting, and it's very important to continue. So, have a good evening, and we'll stay with you to learn the culture. I wonder what I'd be if I was still in Habonim. Rosh Machane would suit me, putting tents up in the rain with mud up to my tush. And if you want to do a pee, go behind the bush. If I was still in Habonim, I wonder what I'd be. If I was still in Habonim, I can't fire builder I would be. Standing round the campfire, we sing and dance and shout. And when the fun was over, we turn and put it out. Put Standing it round the campfire, we sing and dance and shout. And when the fun was over, we turn and put it out. If I was still in Habonim, I wonder what I'd be. If I was still in Habonim, a recording teacher would suit me. To the right and to the left, oh, my memory's getting poorer. Oh, sod it, I don't know the steps, so let's just do the horror. <laughs> to the right and to the left, we'd sing and dance and shout. Oh, sod it, I don't know the steps, so let's turn and put it there. Standing round the campfire, we'd sing and dance and shout. And when the fun was over, we'd turn and put it there. <laughs> if I was still in Habonim, I know what I would be. If I was still in Habonim, in security I would be. Hello, 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 hello. What have we got here? Hello, 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 hello. You, you look sexy, dear. Hello, 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 hello. 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 What have we got here? Hello, hello, hello. 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 If I was still in Habonim, I wonder what I'd be. If I was still in Habonim, a madrik would suit me. At Mifkad, I would raise the flag and call out commands loudly. Amod Noah, Amod Dom, in unison, so proudly. Hello, 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 hello. What have we got here? Hello, 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 hello. hello. tonight. You know who they are. They're the parents' committee. 
They help with the finance and all the nitty gritty. A new mower done, or perhaps an extension. So much to be done, we just have to mention. The Vardle Mums there with help and support for our venues, our programmes, activities, sport. <laughs> So, from little beginnings to a 90 year span, we thank and salute you, Vardler Man. Up the proverbial creek without a paddle is where I would suggest Albany would have been without the support of the various Vade Le Man over so many years. And we are delighted that a number of our Havarim who were closely involved in these Vade Le Man in their hometown are with us here this evening. We have been fortunate over the years to be able to attract the right people to our cause, and none more so than Ruth Lady Morris of Kenwood, and we are truly delighted that she has joined us here this evening from the UK. be a highly respected property lawyer, but for us the name will always be identified with Habonim as our honorary president. In 2014 she was awarded a CBE for services to the community and we salute you for joining us here this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, our honorary president, Ruth Lady Morris of Kent. tonight that are very difficult to follow and Barry sent me an email saying would I speak and I said yes and then he sent me an email saying you have two minutes and I said have you ever known anybody from my family speaking only for two minutes so he sent me one back saying well I'll give you three so I'll have to talk very quickly and read um, I am nearly as old as Habanim itself, but not quite. And virtually all my life has been associated with Habanim. And as you've just heard, I'm its honorary president and still very much involved. It is in that capacity that I bring greetings to you all from the United Kingdom. I came first to Israel in 1950 with my brother. We hitchhiked around the country, my brother playing the ukulele everywhere we went, on the bus, in the street, wherever. And in Nazareth, a lovely Arab guy tried to buy me for his wife. My brother refused. I think he was scared to go home without me. <laughs> The highlight of our trip was our visit to Kfar Hanasi. I slept in a tent without a mosquito net and the result was predictable. <laughs> Nevertheless, it felt wonderful to be what I thought was at home, so to speak, on a Habanim kibbutz. I am pleased to tell you that the movement in the United Kingdom is thriving today. And the camp that I visited this summer at our main site in Wales was one of the best camps I have ever visited. This was spearheaded by Lucy Travis, who is here tonight. And to whom we owe so much and has given her life to the movement and played a large part of our success today. A Hashara program which I am delighted to see represented here by our Shnatis. <laughs> our 
currently on a kibbutz very near to a place called Gan Nair, which some of you will know well. Gan Nair was actually named for my late father, Lord Janna. The J in Janna was replaced with a G as Gan Nair, and that became Gan Nair. And I do so hope that if any of you are nearby, that you do go and have a look because there's a library there that is devoted to my parents. There was a Yom Activity Day at our recent summer camp in Wales, where the Hanikim built a model agricultural kibbutz in the heart of the Welsh valleys. And I am sure that must be, that, that must bring back many happy memories for all of you. Our current muskier Jake is also here today and would be very happy to answer any questions you may have about Havonim UK today. And he's a great guy and we're very happy to have him. I am very happy to share this platform with Nia Mir and with so many of you who are, who are associated with Habonim, reflecting our historic relationship with the kibbutz movement. I am confident that Nia and Yochai Wolfin and Cherie and the Habonim Draw Olami Maskir will ensure that the kibbutz movement and HDO will continue to interact with and support HDUK going forward as the movement in the UK goes from strength to strength. Many thanks indeed for those warm words and indeed an encouraging message. And in recognition of so many years of involvement with us, please accept this plaque as a small token of our appreciation. <laughs> the inscription on the plaque reads, on the 90th anniversary of Habonim, Habonim Drawer, October 31st, 2019. Presented to Lady Ruth Morris of Kenwood, Barcoach of Habonim, as a token of appreciation from countless generations of Havarim, pioneers all, who have benefited directly from your inspirational support. Thank you. Habonim was always a movement of protest. Come marching down through the fire, and the 
captain fell in love with a bonny chamber maid, and her name it was called Betty Betty O. Now come down the stairs, Betty Betty, my dear. Come down and take a glass, Betty Betty O. Oh, come down the stairs, come back here, here now, here. Take a glass, farewell for your daddy O. in Israel was the natural continuation of the Harshavot in Britain. And so it was finally goodbye to Newport Paganal, Buckinghamshire, which closed in 1947 and the Chavarim transferred to the new David Eder farm at Dial Post. The David Eder at Ringlestone, Harriet Shah, was active from 1935 to 1947. Dorothy Lees at Malmesbury was active from 1942, closing in 1946. Wiggy House at Redhill also transferred its members in the late 1940s to the new David Eder Farm at Dial Post. Hurst Grange at Twyford Reading, also known as Zichron Yeshayahu, opened in 1948 and closed in 1955. Bosham, Chichester, Sussex, also known as Kibbutz Mariahu, opened in 1948 and closed in 1955. And finally, goodbye to our beloved David Eder Park, really <laughs> Dial Post Horsham, the Chava, active from 1947 till 1970. The following is the late Henry Nees comments of the first Takshara, Shnat which is in Beit Emek, the years 70 to 71, and I was lucky enough to be one of the participants. All I remember is young, eager faces, and quite a few names, and some memorable places. We spent our first night somewhere by the Yarkon. But what, we did, what did we do next? Those memories have gone. We aimed, I suppose, to create Chalutzim and bring you all back here to found Kibbutzim. 
I remember that wonderful hike, Yam El Yam, and how you would argue until kingdom come. And I recall how you sang in that damp mordon, and the prickling I felt in my eyes when you'd gone. But summing it all up, and when it's all said and done, there are lots of you here, and we're still having fun. Rubbish! Absolute rubbish! Absolutely rubbish! Absolute rubbish. Yeah, bloody hell. That's a luxury, you know. Oh, bloody oh. Maybe it's okay for today. But in our day, Aksha, Reading, David Eda Farm. And there was another one, but I can't quite remember the name. Oh, never mind. You know. Well, they only had one year, you know. One year, was it? Yeah. yeah, they only worked one year, and they actually only worked for a few months, all in all. Hey, excuse me, we worked for ten and a half months. Uh, yeah, ten and a half months, and really well gone, that. blimey. I was on Aksha Ra for two years, and we worked twenty-four, six and a half, you remember milking in the refit on Shabbat? Aye. Yeah. You know, when they closed the Hachshalot in the 70s, I got locked in. <laughs> I wasn't let out for 10 years. Oh, you look it as well. Oh, oh, that's <laughs> true. Wow. I suppose we have to accept it, you know? We have to move with the times. Move? Move? I wish I could. I... <laughs> Well, give us a hand. I'll give you a hand up, mate. Off you go. Oh, lovely. <coughs> oh, an actual fact. Speaking of movement, I think I've got one coming. I pick it off quick. Oh, uh, hurry up then. Okay. Hey, hey, off you get. I'm off, I'm off. Bye. We rambled on through hills and dales. And at the end, to free parted, it's and it came down, we danced the tilly, our lives went on, so uncharted, self hovering, thou sadly gone, but those days are not forgotten, but our common dreams will always stay. We did it our
Over the years, there has always been a choir as a central activity at Habonim, both at Bachanot and in the Kinim. and the privilege of playing to you a 1948 recording of the Habonim Central Choir singing Shir HaPanmach. We dedicate this song to the Chavarim and Chavarot who lost their lives in the wars for the modern Israel, both in the Jewish Defense Forces and the Jewish Brigade, and to those dear to her hearts who were injured in the line of duty 
and those who were killed in the wars of Israel, in the Israel Defence Forces. Now, our choral ensemble will join in the song at some point, and we would ask you all to join in, and thus we would have one voice spanning 71 years. Our final speaker this evening is the proof of the cliché that the apple does not fall far from the tree. And you'll understand what I mean when I tell you that his name is Yochai Wolfen, that he lives in Kfarhanasi, was a shaliach of Habanim Dror to Cape Town, and is now the maskir of Habanim Dror Olami. Concurrently, he is also the community director of Kibbutz Kfar Blum, the first kibbutz that British Havanim helped to establish. Chavarim and Chavarot, our last speaker this evening, please welcome the maskir of Havanim Dror Olami, Yochai Wolfen. Good evening. Good to all Bogway, British Havanim Dror. And thank you for having, giving me the privilege of standing before you this evening at this 90th anniversary celebration of Abonim Dor. When we talk about our youth movement, we talk about the sub, sub mile objective that Bogrim of the movement aim to achieve, and that is the realization of what the movement stands for. The realization of the ideal does not cease when they make Aliyah. The realization is a process that continues throughout all their years as they are an expression of the values they were educated towards in, in the movement. These values have been passed down to your children and to your grandchildren. Generations of Bogre Abonim Dor chose to leave their comfortable home in Britain in order to make Aliyah to Israel and express the Zionist ideal. Their positive influence on Israel and Israeli society stands out in all walks of life, wherever they settled, whether it be kibbutz, the city, 
and whether they were engaged in industry, the media, and the academia, and even government. This is the result of movement, movement education, which was spiced with Anglo-Saxon values, education that left its mark on Bogre Abonim and contributed to making Israel a more green and pleasant land. My father, Arya Wolfe, <laughs> and Abonim Ole in the 50s, is a good example for the value that underwent a multi-generation process and thus were passed on to me. And here I am standing before you as the maskir of Walda Bonim Dol. You can just imagine how much naches he brought to me. And I would like to think he is proud of me as much as I am proud of him. Yeah. Ninety years ago, Ninety years have passed since Wellesley Aaron founded Abonim in London, and the movement, which combined with all, is now active in 14 countries throughout the world. I thank you for your generous contribution to the values of Abonim Dol and of the Abonim Dol that have survived the generations, and I wish us many more years of fruitful educational activity. Finally, I would like to thank the organizing committee staff for making this incredible event happen and to our benefactors for contributing for this event and our ongoing work. Chazak ve'ematz alev action. Toda. the singers, the dancers, narrators, the old geezers and singers, 
and I want to express our thanks to Danny Sokol, the yeah. event coordinator, Wonder Woman, Coral Naval, or Idumbo Rehab, an administrator without whom none of this would have happened. Mike Shaw, our treasurer, whose son is getting married tomorrow, was out of mind. Debbie and Zev Gelbard who curated and created and curated the astounding exhibition with the help of Ilan Israel and Stephen Kleiner. Judy Davis who wrote and rewrote most of the script. Carol Schultz who coordinated with FL. Alec Collins our junior advisor and transport coordinator. Dave Isaacs who designed the logo. Cartoons that you've seen by Dennis Shivrin, Yigal and Linda Levine, who not only were on the coordinating committee, but also together with Linda Shomar, Mike Schnorr and Ilan Israel, are our dedicated archive volunteers. Harold Hirsch, a for Harold, who edits our Eton, Josh Davis and Lucy Travers of Hubbard in Draw, and Italian Frack of Hubbard in Draw Olami, and Yigal Sela, who ensured with great enthusiasm that this amazing event would take place. And I'd like to make a special mention also to Sue Lapidot, who did that wonderful booba as you came in to the hall. This event was supported by the Galila Yon Regional Council, the Kibbutz Movement, Hapunim Dro Olami, and in particular, the Kibbutz Representative Charitable Trust. And finally, to our Whiskey Technical and Musical Director, Clive Noble. And the Production Director, the one and only Brenda Landis. Can I butt in here, please? We'd like to give a very, very big thank you to the Chivra from Colan, who have made the sound and the lighting here absolutely superb. Amazing, amazing work, guys. And of course, to Guy Schlesinger, our good friend, who has helped put it all together, for me anyway. <laughs> um, lastly, the most important person, Who's, divide, who's devoted more time over the last few years than everyone else put together, and without whom this celebration would never have happened, the one and only, Barry Coleman!
those of you who haven't seen the exhibitions and the film, it's still open.